Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone watching this session. This is the Next Genius webinars, and we have Amit Chaturvedi with us to talk about Internet of Things, which is also known as IoT. To know more about Internet of Things or IoT, Amit Amit will be Amit will be explaining it to us. And before that, let uh, Amit, could you please introduce about yourself, your background, the college you attended, about your majors? Uh, yes. Uh... So uh, I went to Purdue University. I graduated in 2021. I had my degree in computer science, and uh, within computer science, I focused on software engineering and uh, data analytics. So um, my education was basically just focused on a lot of math and uh, computer science. And my senior year of college, I attended um, a webinar similar to this one, where uh, an alumni of our college. Uh, working for an IoT company, uh, Raytheon, uh, gave a speech, and that's what got me uh, interested in IoT because um, it just made me realize the fact that they were consulting for Boeing, which is uh, an airline company, and it, it just seemed really interesting, especially with my background in CS, the amount of uh, real-time analytics that we can do and decisions that we can make uh, while the plane is in the air, sitting in a control room, uh, just collecting millions and millions of data points every second, uh, making real-time decisions, and how that has made uh, the entire industry way more efficient uh, seems really interesting to me, and uh, that caught my attention. So that's why I started applying to a lot of automobile companies. Um, so right now, IoT, I would say, is um, the fourth. Is not only the fourth industrial revolution; it's already here. Um, uh, IoT, 5G, and AI are a huge part of the fourth industrial revolution. And um, if you're not caught up with it, then uh, you're probably experiencing it in everyday life and you just don't realize it. That's interesting, Ame. Could you tell us more about what are you presently working on? Yes, so I work for Twitter Material Handling. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, it is uh, a sister company of Toyota Motors. Uh, we manufacture industrial equipment such as uh, AGVs, which are automated guided vehicles, forklifts, pallet jacks. Uh, basically, we are the number one provider on the globe for industrial equipment. Uh, Amazon, PepsiCo, any major company that you would know that has a warehouse, uh, there's a 99% chance to use Toyota material equipment material handling equipment. So what we are doing is we are making warehouses much more efficient. Um, supply chain is with a new, like the whole, you know, during the COVID pandemic, everyone's ordering everything online. You know, real markets, are, especially in first world countries such as the United States, real, real in-person markets are on the decline and online markets are growing. And with that, supply chain uh, is just, you know, in being really slow and to make it efficient we need to perform some sort of remote controls um, on our warehouses and that's what we do at Toyota. We are connecting all the industrial equipment uh, such as the forklifts and uh, the automated guided vehicles to the cloud. Uh, we as they are operating them in warehouses it could be you know a thousand miles away from me. Uh, I can see the data real time on my computer and we also sell the software to dealerships and to the customers as well. So if you're a dealer who sold the forklift and someone grabs the forklift and they're, you know, they're charging you, they're calling for the warranty, you can actually, instead of, you know, having no idea what happened to it, you can actually just log into your computer and see what exactly happened at the moment of the impact, what was the force, who was operating it, where it was going. And not only data analytics, it allows us to create a lot of uh, reporting, uh, which really helps in uh, analytics and business analytics, business intelligence. It allows us to make better decisions because now we actually know how people are using our focus and using our equipment, and we can actually better our equipment based on the analysis that we receive. So the manufacturer is useful for the dealerships and the customers themselves. Great. Now we got to know about Ame. Now let's learn a little bit about Internet of Things, also known as IoT. What got you interested in IoT? And tell us a little more about Internet of Things. Yes. So um, the way I see it is, 
Internet of Things is here. It is the next big thing in uh, the global industry. Uh, every company these days uh, is using some sort of uh, analytics for the equipment, uh, whether be it manufacturing or supply chain, any industry, there's a chance that they are either using IoT or they are planning on using it in the future. It is just a way of computers or machines to interact with each other. So there's two kinds of internet. There's the regular internet, which is the World Wide Web that we humans use. Now, what that requires is it requires input from two humans. So I'm sitting on my phone. You know, it requires input from me as a human being. And then you on the other end, who is also a human or could be a computer, is receiving the input. Uh, with IoT, there's no human interaction whatsoever. It's a way of computers to talk to each other. It's a way of machines to talk to each other. So the way IoT works is, for example, let me give you the analogy of a car. Um, best example would be Tesla. You're driving it on the highway. The car is connected to the cloud. The car is receiving, is generating millions of data points every second. And that data is being sent to the cloud. And from the cloud, it could be SAP, it could be any Azure, it could be any database. Uh, you could sit on your computer and your computer could make real-time decisions without any human input. So for example, if you're driving, let's say, over speed limit, uh, and, you know, as a dealer, you've configured that no one, I don't want anyone to drive my car over the speed limit. So without any humans slowing the car down whatsoever, the car would let the cloud know that it's going that fast. And then the computer could be 500 miles away, would make a decision to slow down the car and the car would slow down on its own. So even as simple as your Apple Watch is connected to the internet, uh, any it's not that complicated. Any machine that's connected to the internet is a part of the internet of things. And I think that's a feature of uh, just how the internet has made you know humans way more connected and it's made our lives way more efficient. Some might argue not, but uh, I believe it has. And that's what we're doing for computers uh, now as well for machines. Thank you. Thank you, Amay, for putting it in much simpler words. Now, what are some new developments that you foresee in the field of Internet of Things? So, I mean, new developments uh, in the near future, I would say in the next five years, is just making the process more efficient. Uh, I think 5G is already here, and that basically what it does, it makes the communication easier. So it makes the communication faster, which is really needed for the automobile industry is what I work in industrial equipment industry uh, because we have to make real time decisions. We cannot wait more than a split second to make that decision because if there's going to be an accident, we need to make a decision before it happens and accidents happen in a split second. So I think we just need to make the communication way, way, way more efficient. Uh, I think another development that could happen is um, I think quantum computers would really help uh, make the process more efficient because right now, with the amount of data that we're going to store, it's going to grow exponentially over the years. And currently, the data farms, the server farms that we have uh, would not be able to hold the capacity even in the next 10 years for that volume of data. So I think we need to find a way to store data more efficiently, which is where I think quantum computing uh, would play a huge role. Other than that, I would say just making the uh, machine learning algorithms more efficient. So that way the computers don't only really know how to communicate with each other, but over the, over the years, they learn how to communicate better and they learn how to make decisions for themselves with the least amount of uh, human intervention. Got it. What are some of the career options in IoT? So IoT has a lot of career options. I mean, I work as an IoT analyst. So what I do is I bridge the gap between the business team and the technical team. So you could go into the actual development of IoT. Within IoT development, there's plenty of fields. Uh, you know, you could go into the software side of it, the software integration side of it, which is the cloud computing side of it, or you could go in the firmware development side of it. Both are really viable options. Or, you know, if you're just a basic software engineer, you could actually build a web portal that allows the user to interface with the data that you're collecting with the operational data, with the e-commerce data. There's plenty of options when it comes to development. If you're more interested on the business side of things, uh, which would be a lot of like making decisions, like okay, a developer would just be would just tell you, okay, I'm I'm capable of giving you all this data, but you know, data is just data if you're not using it. You know, it's just uh, 
if, it's, if you're not using it, it's just going to waste. So that's where the business side of it comes in. That's where I come in. Uh, we decide what we're going to do with that data, how it's going to help us make our processes better, how it's going to help us uh, make decisions better, how it's going to help us make warehouses more efficient. So those are the two sides of IoT. And I feel like no matter what background you have, if you're really interested in IoT, it's, it's a field that will present you options in every single industry. Superb. Before we close the session, Amey, could you tell us a few suggestions or what is your advice to the students who want to pursue a career in this field? So my, my suggestion would be, if you're interested in IoT, then uh, there's no specific major for it. I would recommend you major in computer science uh, or mathematics or data analytics, data science, because all these three fields, what they would do is they would provide you the right fundamentals that you need uh, to pick up an IoT. And with IoT, like computer science in general, it's an ever-changing field. I mean, up until two years ago, Java was a really popular language, and today no one uses it as much. Everyone uses Python, so everything's changing every day. I mean, right now we're using .NET for IoT development. Who knows, tomorrow we might use another framework, another language. So you need to have the right fundamentals uh, because it's an ever-changing industry. So I would say first get your uh, first get your roots really strong by doing a major in computer science. Um, get some data analytics classes in there as well that would really help you make your background really strong and with that you would have the options to go into either side of it i mean i could have gone into the development side of it but i enjoy problem solving i enjoy making decisions i uh i don't code i tell people what to code so that's something that fit best for me and i think that's a decision that you should leave uh for yourself in your senior year of college and not something you should decide in your first year of college Thank you so much, Amai, for that really powerful advice to the students. And with that, we come to the end of the session. Thank you for joining us today. And thanks a lot for telling us more about or explaining more about IoT, also known as Internet of Things. Thank you.